trying out a new camera today, so hopefully this works out. Um, today, I'm going to start working on the floors. Uh, the original floor, this is like a rubber mat and plywood that's currently down is all going to come up. All the, the metal trim and stripping I've been working on taking screws out and we are going to rip it all up, um, clean up because there's bound to be some rust, surface rust, and then go ahead and seal it and then we can put down our new subfloor uh, with insulation and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on this and uh, we're going to go from there. Here we are. Uh, today I went ahead and sweeped up the floor. I'm going to go ahead and vacuum all that up and then need to start cutting all these screws that stayed from when I pried up the floor. There's Karma. Got the heater in the back removed. Got my uh, heater hoses for the front removed. I think going to be monotonous. I'm just going to be going through, rolling around, cutting all the screw heads off. <laughs> All right, so got all the screws cut, most of them. I'm sure I'll find one or two. And now it's time to go in, cupped, twisted, braided wire wheel. You don't want to use the straight ones uh, because. And it's going to get real gross in here. But I'm just going to start working the back. There's no what we would call like cancer when working on classic cars and stuff. You could have a car completely covered in surface rust. And if it's not, doesn't have major pitting, if it doesn't have pinholes or anything through it, we consider that sometimes rust free. You can absolutely just clean it up, prevent it from happening again and paint over it and everything. So that's what we have here. Fortunately, if you're wondering and looking to see if you have cancerous rust or flaky rust or anything, it's gonna be around generally your bolt holes. If any of these, are like flaking out or they're bigger and they're not like that clean hole anymore um, but they're like you know you can see them spreading um, that is a sign that you have that cancerous rust but all these are this still very clean edge and everything again there's surface rust but when i take all this up i mean it's well you'll see yeah so i'm gonna kick the pup out of here and get to working and and see what's next. You wanna say hi? So I'm gonna put on a podcast and kinda of get to work. wire wheel and I was gonna go through the shop back but decided to take a little break and let someone else do some of the cleaning for a change. Just getting all the fine particulate up and I'm also I'm thinking of almost maybe um, doing a light mop over it to get all the fine grit so when I actually glue down because I'm gluing down my insulation when I go to glue that down it has just the best surface possible. Uh, I'm gonna let this run I'm gonna clean up a little bit I am super gross, this is so gross. Let it run and uh, kind of go from there. All right, so I got it all swept up, cleaned up. I ran the Roomba on it twice, and now it's time to go ahead and seal the floor. I'm using a chassis saver. I think I got it on the cheapest place I found was like a, a farm supply maybe. 
cheaper than Amazon and everything, even with shipping. What I'm gonna do is just kind of pour it out and roll it. I don't have a tray. Um, I'd probably do that if I had it, but I like it a little bit cleaner, a little more organized, but. So I'm just gonna start pouring it out and rolling it and we'll just go from there. I got the whole floor sealed and uh, I'm definitely going to go back in after this is dried with a brush and get all the cracks, get closer to the edge of the wall around the wheel wells. And to give you an idea, this is a 37 foot rear engine, a pusher, and I used about a half a gallon on this. It comes out watery, it, it gets a lot of coverage and uh, yeah, so I was able to get the whole thing and didn't didn't try to go thin, didn't try to save anything. I expected to use the whole, you know, $90 gallon. And I used about a half. Um, I say that because I know it's expensive. And if you're not planning on doing a bunch of extra, if you want to use this elsewhere on the walls or anything, uh, go ahead and get a gallon. But you could probably get away with buying quarts. Um, and again, I got, I got full coverage here without any issue. I still have uh, about a half gallon. I'm gonna set my fan up and uh, and just kind of let it dry and that's all I'm doing today and then I'll go back in again touch that stuff up before going to the next step gluing down the insulation. Uh, another day on the bus and it's an exciting one because it's finally uh, one of the last parts of the bus that we're actually going from having to clean up and, and, and cut stuff out and everything to actually like building back in. I got them sealed and now uh, we are gluing down and cutting out the insulation board. So let's take a look. All right, so we're going ahead and cutting out the width of the boards right now to the bus, which are a little bit narrower than the actual width. Uh, if you watch, you know, a lot of the builders online, they'll talk to you about how the chair rail, um, because it sticks out, you need to cut it short to actually fit the boards in. You'll have to do this with the plywood as well. Now, with the foam, I'm, I'm leaving a little bit more space just to make it easier, um, because it is kind of, you know, it, it's kind of floppy and everything, um, which that will get filled in with expanding foam. But did not get the first one recorded. Um, I was just trying to figure it out really. Uh, this is a full sheet. Um, as in this is, I believe this is actually, it might be, I may have cut an inch off. So it might be actually uh, 47 inches and then cut out the little angle there. Again, pretty close within about half inch everywhere. Um, a little bit bigger gap here, but went ahead and did this. Um, got some weights on it. We're cutting out the other ones right now, um, but we may not glue them down today. It just kind of depends on how it goes. Uh, I have more weights, but I don't necessarily want to just keep bringing stuff in. So might bring enough in to like glue two down, let that set, and then glue two more down. But I think we're going to try to get most of them cut out today. of the insulation and on the floor super pumped it's really starting to kind of take shape and and look like something I think just like the clean surfaces got all that glued down sorry if I didn't get uh, all the video of it real well um, I was just trying to knock stuff out had batteries dying and everything so today I am working on subfloor not sure how much I'll get done um, I went ahead and cut the first piece um, so I want to stagger the seams so I cut the first one at about half. It also made it easier to <clears throat> cut this and only dealing with half a sheet 
as opposed to if this is a full sheet. So um, have it shorter on each side because it needs to clear this rail, otherwise it would have been too wide, I wouldn't be able to get it in. Um, this will get spray foamed, all the edges, uh, these wheel wells will get boxed later on. So all the wood's gonna be covering that and then all that will get filled. So today I'm just gonna try to get uh, as much, as many sheets of the subfloor down. I am uh, gluing them down um, with that. I will try to show a picture of the construction adhesive. It should look really good, give us a good place to draw the template on the floor and kind of really finalize where we want to do uh, walls and rooms and everything so we know what order or what windows to order and I can get those that order placed and start working on that. Speaking of the walls, um, something you could, might be able to see a little bit, uh, might see some gaps and stuff. The walls are not finished. I had a little bit of an issue, that bubbling that we saw, that oil canning um, was actually worse than I realized. I am gonna have to pull those rivets out. Not sure if I'm gonna have to reuse the sheets or not. Um, you'll see that when I when I get to that. That'll be next. <sighs> we'll deal with that when we get there. So I'm gonna start working on this. I'm gonna set up the camera and go ahead and start getting this flooring down. And you know, you'll just kind of see what I'm doing. Just a lot of measuring. The foam board was a little tougher to get all cut out and measured. Uh, the plywood, I'm actually going off those dimensions, so the plywood should be a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. 